Weak people hate strong minds. And there's an infestation of weak people in this fucking world. See, you're born with one mouth for a reason. To speak what you believe in. Speak your thoughts. Speak your truth. But what happens is the goal of weak people is to silence you. So what they do to you is to isolate you. The more they isolate you, the more you want to put a fucking damn, you want to sew up your mouth right in the middle. You start speaking out both sides of your mouth. You don't stand for shit. And eventually what happens is, they make you so fucking soft, you become a fucking bobblehead. You start to shake your head, yes, for whatever they fucking want. Speak your truth. Don't be a fucking bobblehead. Stay hard. Greetings, loves. Um, I want to do a thank you video to the Chris Thorne Show for covering uh, Genesis Dockery's case. Um, this is my youngest brother's daughter who, if you guys don't know, Genesis was eight years old and she was, um, her life was taken by an 11 year old boy who, um, obtained a weapon or two from someone and she was at the babysitter's house when this happened and this happened to be the babysitter's son okay so this is an ongoing investigation and it's a complex situation because there is a minor that is involved and then you have the question of who all can be held accountable and for an update, the 11-year-old has been taken into custody, but no charges have been filed. Now, the 11-year-old has been taken into custody upon recommendations by the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office. This happened in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, the Cumberland County Sheriff's Department recommended um, a couple of charges to include larceny because it's alleged that he obtained them without permission and emphasis on the word alleged and they recommend manslaughter um i know people would talk about other cases like there was a case where there was a um, young boy um who had a more serious type weapon and accidentally um discharged it on a one-year-old relative and two women were taken into custody almost immediately but you guys have to consider the laws you have to consider the laws in your state you have to consider what the laws say about these things and it doesn't seem important until it happens to you or someone that you care about right because let's say, for instance, I'm all the way in Georgia. This is in North Carolina. I don't have any small children, only grandchildren. And this is something that wouldn't necessarily be on the forefront of my mind outside of this happening. But at the end of the day, you have politicians that push certain laws and decline other laws. And you have people who push bills to become laws. And you have people that... Um, support the politicians who are in favor of certain bills and laws and you also can you know push bills yourself but if you're not involved in local politics and you don't know what the laws are and you don't know what the people who you vote for laws support then you come up surprised when something happens and then you want something to be a result but then you have to look at well what does the law say because they can only do um what's within the hands of the law even if you push even if you rally even if you have the whole community behind you and everybody's in an uproar they're only going to go by what's in the law and um you know you just got to keep that in mind okay so when I go to gunpolicy.org, um, it states that Guilford's, Guilford's Law, let me bring this up because it's kind of small, Guilford's Law Center, 
to prevent uh, gun violence in 2023. Minimum age to purchase and possess in North Carolina. Who can have a gun? Uh, North Carolina law prohibits any person under the age of 18 from willfully and intentionally possessing or carrying a handgun unless the minor possesses the handgun for educational and recreational purposes while supervised by an adult who is present. Unless they are emancipated and possesses the handgun inside his or her residence or possesses the handgun while hunting outside the limits of an incorporated municipality and has written permission from a parent or grant or guardian. Sorry. There is no minimum age to possess rifles and shotguns in North Carolina. Okay, I'll state again. There is no minimum age to possess rifles and shotguns in North Carolina. A parent, a guardian, a person standing in for a parent is prohibited from knowingly permitting his child under the age of 12. 12. To possess or use a firearm, whether loaded or unloaded, while not supervised by the parent or guardian or person standing in for the parent. No other person may knowingly furnish a firearm to the child under the age of 12. Additionally, North Carolina prohibits any person from causing, encouraging, or aiding a minor who is less than 18 to possess or carry, whether openly or concealed, any firearm on educational property. Moreover, North Carolina imposes a felony on any person who sells, offers, or for sale, gives, or transfers in any way a handgun to a person under 18. Federal age restrictions impose stricter limits. Okay, and this is the Giffords Law Center. Okay, now let's also look at the fact that it is a misdemeanor in North Carolina for any person to knowingly permit a child under age under the age of 12 to have access to our possession custody or use in any manner of a firearm whether loaded or unloaded unless the person has the permission of the child's parent guardian and the child is under the supervision of an adult it's a misdemeanor a misdemeanor now this is vanlawfirm.com and it says the degree of liability varies by state but adults who do not properly secure their weapons can be held both criminally and financially liable if their child or another person uh, eliminates or injures someone with the firearm. Now when you look at this PDF of state laws and published ordinances in North Carolina Subchapter 11, General Police Regulations, Article 39, Protection of Minors. It basically just restates what I've already said. It talks about selling or giving weapons to a minor. Okay. Um, it does not specifically say anything about what the minor may or may not do with the gun and what will happen. It just tells you under what conditions that you can give a weapon to a minor. And again, you can allow your minor to use a gun under certain conditions. Now this is from Washington, D.C. When you look at the summary of state child access prevention laws, um, states with child access prevention laws, North Carolina is listed and we've talked about that a little bit. State laws based on negligent storage, North Carolina is not listed, okay? States imposing criminal liability for allowing a child to gain access to the firearm regardless of whether the child uses the firearm or causes injury. North Carolina is not listed, okay? States imposing criminal liability only if a child uses or possesses the firearm Okay, North Carolina is listed. States imposes crimi imposing criminal liability for negligent storage of unloaded firearms. North Carolina is not listed. State laws prohibiting intentional knowing or reckless provision of firearms to minors. North Carolina is not listed. Okay. 
Now let's read this. This is a description of state child access prevention laws. Laws imposing criminal liability when a child gains access as a result of negligent storage now. As 14 states, North Carolina is listed, and it says they have laws that impose criminal liability on a person who negligently store firearms where minors could or do gain access to the firearm. Typically, these laws apply whenever a person knows or reasonably should know that a child is likely to gain access to the firearm. There are a number of variations to these type of laws, including whether the child must use the firearm and whether the firearm must be loaded. The most significant variations are described below. Okay, and it has states imposing criminal liability for allowing a child to gain access. Um, Massachusetts, Minnesota, uh, Maryland, New Jersey, Texas. States imposing criminal liability only if a child uses or possesses the firearm. Connecticut, Florida, Illinois, Iowa, North Carolina, New Hampshire, uh, Illinois, okay. Now here it talks about common exceptions. States allow several exceptions to the child access prevention laws. North Carolina is listed. And it says other exceptions include cases where the firearm is used for hunting, sports, shooting, and or agricultural purposes, where the minor use, uses the firearm in defense of self and others. In North Carolina is a stand your ground law uh, state where the firearm is used in aid of law enforcement or where the child has completed a firearm safety course. So here when it talks about the definition of a minor, it's talking about ranging from under 14 to those under 18, and the under 18 category is North Carolina. But as we read specifically in North Carolina, it's stating under the age of 12. Now we're gonna go back to Gifford's Law, and it says the liability for firearms. Okay, that's on school property unsafely stored firearms Uh, any person who resides with a minor and owns or possesses a firearm that's very specific Um, okay it talks about the retail or seller it is a misdemeanor in North Carolina for any persons to not only permit a child under the age of 12 to have access to possession custody or use in any manner any firearm whether loaded or unloaded unless the person has permission of the child's parent, guardian, and the child is under the supervision of an adult. Um, North Carolina has no law that requires unattended firearms to be stored in a certain way. North Carolina also does not require a locking device to accompany the sale of a firearm, and no state statutes require the firearm owners to affirmatively lock up their weapons. Okay? So when you look at situations like this and then you begin to look up what the laws are and you take in consideration what the laws probably should be to make it safer when it comes to children, um, hey, this is is one because not requiring them to be stored in a certain way or unlocked also means that if a child is around, they may have you know more access to the firearm and North Carolina laws vary heavily when it comes to can a child have possession to a firearm so it's it's kind of open-ended there so let's go here to the Guardian and look at this um, somewhat similar case this is an 11 year old in Detroit that was accused of accidentally shooting a toddler and through the prosecutor, though the prosecutor admits rarity of charges, rarity of charges against a juvenile observer say the real problem is Michigan's lack of a child prevent access law. So the 11 year old was charged with manslaughter as not even done in this case, but suggested, right? So he shot a three year old boy after he allegedly found a gun at his father's house. 
Um, his father was arraigned on several criminal charges, including involuntary manslaughter. Um, again, it remains exceedingly rare to charge a juvenile that young for killing someone, especially in cases when a shooting might be considered an accident. Okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit more. And experts say parents are not frequently charged for child shootings, raising questions about where accountability belongs for gun violence. In 2013, 14 children under the age of 12 were charged with murder and non-negligent manslaughter, according to the FBI. That's a lot, but just imagine how many cases happen and it, they're not charged. So if it's truly an unintentional or accidental death, then it's very uncommon, said John Vernick, co-founder of John Hopkins Center for Gun Policy and Research. Now, details of the Detroit, ca the Detroit case remain scant. Um, he went to his father's home and he allegedly grabbed the gun from the bedroom closet mm, and tossed it out a bedroom window in the backyard and retrieved it before entering a nearby vehicle. According to the county prosecutor, the three-year-old later identified as Elijah Walker entered the parked vehicle moments later, was shot in the face by the 11-year-old. Um, hmm, that's a iffy situation. The prosecutor said she can't remember a time in her office has charged someone that young with taking a life. The 11-year-old was charged as a juvenile with manslaughter and felony firearm. A judge in the county's juvenile court system has since granted a request for a competency exam to determine if the boy is fit to stand trial. Now, this case with Genesis in North Carolina, let's just say the, the little boy is charged. Okay. Um, again, you have to look at the steps that will be taken by the courts and the possibility that at the end of the day, he won't be charged, right? So... Let's go back to this other case here. Um, they did a competency exam. So the child's parents and his attorney could not be reached for comment despite several attempts. The father was also criminally charged on Monday. Now this is the father of the boy where the he also was the person responsible for um, securing the gun. And he was charged um, with involuntary manslaughter, second-degree child abuse, felony firearm, and weapons. The prosecutor's office said in a press release that the father stored the firearm in a grossly negligent manner. That also cannot necessarily be applied in all cases because what? The laws vary on how you need to store it. Like, say, North Carolina, already read. They don't even have a law that your gun needs to be locked up or stored a certain way, right? Okay, and so he, uh, although Bryson in an interview said it was locked up, in Genesis' case, they're allegedly saying that it was in a safe and he got it or knew the combination, allegedly. The incident underscores what seems to be a frequent event, according to the nonprofit Every Town for Gun Safety. There have been at least 13 unintentional shootings by children under the age of 17. Now, people are asking questions about why would a child get a gun? What's fascinating about children and guns? I think we have to all come to a complete um, understanding that it is definitely going to be one of the most fascinating things on the planet to children. Okay. Driving a car, getting a gun, stuff like that. The ultimate things that a parent only can do that makes them seem so powerful that a child is definitely prohibited from doing. If they see you drinking and smoking and don't matter what you say one day, they're going to be like, I can't wait. If they have an opportunity at a friend's house or whatever, they're going to try it. You know, it's just like when a child is crawling and they can't wait to walk. They see everybody walking and they can't wait to walk. It's just something about the fascination of it, the power of it, the prohibiting them from touching it makes them want it even more. Okay, that's like telling your, your teenage daughter, she said, oh, I love him. Stay away from him. He's a bad guy. Okay, he's good. she's going to want him even more now. So we understand that part. We comprehend the dangers of guns as adults. 
we comprehend we've lived long enough we have better understandings we have seen and heard things in life we understand um, gone forever aka death we understand that a lot better we understand the damages especially if you've taken a course or two the damages that a gun can cause children don't understand that to the levels that we do no matter what you think they know about life they don't get it to that point and children are more ruled by emotions than we are you know you could be mad and want to hurt somebody and want to do things but you as an adult fully knowing the consequences and what you might be giving up if you do it and what also, depending on your beliefs, what you might suffer from doing it, you you might sit down and, and take a look and say, OK, I'm going to take a different route. I'm going to calm myself down or I'm just not going to do that because the consequences outweigh what I'm willing to pay. A child is not even you have to teach a child over the course of its childhood to begin to start thinking like that. Then they have to um brain development has to take place and that goes up what to 20 age 25 they have to fully understand uh, uh, so many different things about life to be able to like put all these pieces together to be able to stop themselves to be able to go past their emotions and process things so when you when you say i don't get i don't understand the the fascination they're excited just like if you leave a child alone for too long next thing you know they done got into something and made a whole mess and it don't make no sense and they're gonna get in trouble for it you're not gonna be happy but they've done it it's just a child's mind it's a child's mind and one thing we need to know for sure if you have a gun and for some reason that child knows you have a gun you better guard it with your life because nine times out of ten they're going to be sneaky and they're going to find a way to get their hands on it and the first thing they're going to want to do is show another person that would be the last thing we will probably want to do unless we're out at a gun show or you know we're in a gun group or we're out hunting but a child is definitely going to want to show another child and that could include that trigger getting pulled somehow so we we need to know this we need to understand this okay let me do go some more of this story so they're saying it's time to hold adults accountable for responsible firearm storage or we'll continue to read news reports of children's lives being devastated by gun violence as in the case of both of the three-year-old and 11 year old this is tragic um but bryson would also be criminally charged Okay, Adam Winkler, UCLA con constitutional law professor who studies gun law, says there are other charges that would hold parents accountable. It could be from negligent endangerment from leaving a gun around that child and could get their hands on it. It could be a violation of the state's safe storage laws. Again, do any of these apply in this situation? You have to look at that. Uh, Lee Barrett, executive director of New York. New Yorkers Against Gun Violence says the U.S. does not have adequate gun laws to hold gun owners responsible for negligence in accidental shootings. Okay, does that need to change? Currently, no data exists on how often parents are charged in the U.S. for violating a cap law. Mm, that's not good. Even in those states that we do have them, that is even more concerning. We have some reason to believe that at least anecdotally, it is relatively rare, according to John Hopkins Vernick. In most states with the cap law, the violation amounts to a misdemeanor offense. Okay, so a child can get hold of a gun and take away another life, and it could be a misdemeanor for that gun owner who this would not have happened in the first place if they did not have the gun stored improperly, right? So that reduces the incentive that prosecutors might have to bring the case. There's another one. And sometimes the criminal justice system is reluctant to charge a grieving parent. Okay, what will make that father a grieving parent? Oh, my son took another life. He's just a child and he, he has to bear this. So they would, the criminal justice system will consider them a grieving parent, whether you guys like it or not. 
Still said Barrett, the buck has to stop with the adult, not the 11 year old. That's ridiculous. Okay, no matter what we say about children these days, we know, we understand, but that's why we are the adults, okay? At the end of the day, the buck has to fall on us. We already know this. This is nothing new. In 1989, Florida passed the first cap law forbidding storage of loaded firearms in a location where a minor could gain access without the lawful permission of the minor's parent. Over the following decade, an additional 17 states follow suit. Now, cap laws prevent children from shooting each other accidentally because it's hard to get your hands on a gun if it's locked up, Winkler said. The laws appear to have had a tremendous impact in reducing the number of accidental shootings. Cap laws are associated with the lower rates of both accidental deaths among children and even suicide amongst teenagers, okay? And that's probably not terribly surprising because when a teen commits suicide, it's overwhelmingly with the gun he or she finds in a home. Uh, in 2002, 60 children under the age of 15 died as a result of an accidental shooting, according to a 2004 study in the Journal of Trauma, Injury, Infection, and Critical Care. Now, it is they, they are saying it's still an alarming figure. It represents 80% drop from 1981 when the study found 298. Now, keep in mind, they already said there's not accurate reporting. So imagine that number being much higher, possibly. Now, Vernick said he can't offer an explanation why more states haven't moved to adopt single, a similar legislation. The National Rifle Association has for years maintained staunch opposition to the legis legislation. Now, I can, I, my opinion as to why is because we aren't pushing for it. We don't think about it until it, it, it concerns us, but it is tragic when a child loses a life, especially at the hand of another child, especially when it was, you know, allegedly accidental and could have been prevent, pre prevented. And then, you know, you got to say what is considered accidental if a child has a gun, wanted to shoot it, because you know they did. I mean, wouldn't that be part of the fascination? Okay, making it go pow. They don't think about the damage to another body. They don't think about the death, possibly. They don't think about none of that. They just, I don't know, they got a rush or something. I just, you know, they're children. So was it truly an accident because the child did it? There's another layer to the case that has legal observers concerned, the psychological implications of prosecuting a 11-year-old. Okay. Now, let's go back to this where it says the National Rifle Association has for many years maintained staunch opposition to the legislation. Um, that's, I, I, I would need to hear from them um, because you, you would need to explain to me why. Why? It would inconvenience you? Like, I don't understand how you could be in opposition to this because if you want to protect the right to carry um as of course i'm an advocate for the right to um own and use firearms as responsible adults why would you want there to be more accidental shootings suicides child deaths by other children so now they're talking about the psychological implications of prosecuting 11 year old deborah labelle and ann harbert um, Arbor attorney who is representing several juvenile plaintiffs in case in a case against the Michigan Department of Corrections says preteens typically understand right from wrong. But that's very different from asking, do you have the capacity to see what the consequences of your actions may be? She said, aiding it, a, adding, and what we know from brain research is absolutely not. They don't think in that way. Again, as much as we want to say they know better, they know what they're doing, da 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 da. The answer to that is yes and no, right? I mean, LaBelle, whose case against the state of Michigan alleges juvenile prisoners were, oh, um, essayed and abused behind bars, said involving the criminal justice system in this seems pointless. The child is probably traumatized, LaBelle said. He can't go to a PG-13 movie to see your friend or cousin's face blown off. Has to be a traumatic event. 
Typically, LaBelle said the purpose of the juvenile court system is to determine what is in the best interest of the child. I can't believe what is in the best interest is to be dragged into the criminal justice system, albeit the juvenile court, she said. This is why the buck has to stop with the responsible adults, because you have to consider all parts, all moving parts of that child even though it is the offender as well. You still have to consider that. And then you have to look at, we are now holding a child responsible for something that parents essentially caused. Because let's say, for example, in Genesis' case, who who, who all possibly dropped the ball? We have no idea how many, right? But let's say, given what we publicly know as a minimum, whomever owned the gun, by allowing the child to get it and whomever was responsible for keeping the care and safety of the children by law at a minimum we understand that at least two adults can be held responsible so that's two methods of prevention that could have been implied and they weren't for whatever reasons they weren't the 11 year old will return to court on September 9th as a condition of his bond. He will, he is not allowed to be in a home with a gun. <sighs> so when I go to the Charlotte Observer, and this is just, these are just to make you think, okay, and not really getting too deep into death, but just to make you think. Um, and this is the last one. This is uh, Charlotte, Charlotte Observer. It says, can North Carolina parents be charged for their kids' crimes? Here's what state law says. So this is concerning something that where in Charlotte, multiple juveniles were arrested. Um, well, multiple juveniles, uh, they had fights and they had um, guns seized and things like that. And we know what is considered a juvenile in North Carolina. Uh, charges against the juveniles, including afraid, carrying a concealed weapon, resisting a public officer, assault on a government official, disorderly conduct, possession of a firearm on city property, possession of pyrotechnics, and failure to disperse. Now, the parents of the minors were cited for contributing to the delinquency of a minor by leaving their teens unsupervised, the police said. The juveniles in question are ages 13 to 17. Okay? Those are little, those ages are a little bigger. Now, according to North Carolina state law, parents can be charged with a misdemeanor if they know, cause, encourage, or aid any juvenile to commit an act whereby the juvenile could be ad- educated, delinquent, undisciplined, abused, or neglected. Now, they said if they know, cause, or encourage. No cause, or encourage. And here's that laws contributing to the delinquency and neglect by parents and others. Any person who is at least 18 years old who knowingly, willingly, or willingly causes, encourages, causes, or encourages, causes, or encourages, knowingly, or willfully causes, or encourages, okay? Knowingly, or willfully causes, causes, or encourages, or aids any juvenile within the jurisdiction of the court to be placed or conditioned or to commit an act whereby a juvenile could be educated. I don't know what, why I'm having a problem with that word. I know I'm not saying it right, but anywho. Delinquent, undisciplined abuse or neglected as defined by, there's the code, shall be guilty of a class one, again, misdemeanor. Misdemeanor. So you can knowingly, willfully cause, encourage, or aid a juvenile and you still you get a misdemeanor okay it is not necessary for the district court exercising juvenile jurisdiction to make an education um adjudication there we go that a juvenile is delinquent undisciplined abused or neglected in order to prosecute a parent or person including an employee of the division of juvenile justice of the department of public safety under this section and ad there it goes it got me again adjudication it's it's always at least one word right that a juvenile is delinquent undisciplined abused or neglected um, shall not preclude a subsequent prosecution of a parent or any other person including an employee okay did I just reread that no they wrote it twice okay 
of the Division of Juvenile Justice of the Department of Public Safety who contributed to the delinquent, undisciplined, abused, or neglected condition of any juvenile. And there's a bunch of codes there. Okay. All right. Okay. So an update by WRNL News on August 10th says the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office submitted a complaint with the Juvenile Justice Department alleging two counts of larceny of a firearm and one count of manslaughter were warranted against the juvenile suspected of killing Genesis Docker. She was eight years old. Now, where did the two counts of um, larceny come from? It is alleged that this young boy took two guns. Okay. He obtained somehow two firearms allegedly and was also brandishing them on social media okay so you you take all these things and you start to factor them in and blend them in with some of the things that we have just read okay and you start to wonder ah okay um let's see da, 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 da. all right so once the complaint is received, the juvenile court counselor reviews it and determines whether to file a juvenile petition or resolve the matter. Now, the juvenile court system, again, is concerned with what is in the best interest of who? The 11-year-old. Okay, we, we, we already established that. Um, so they're going to determine whether to file a juvenile petition or resolve the matter. The counselor has three options. One, file a juvenile petition to initiate a court action. Two, offer the juvenile a diversion. Three, close the complaint without further action. Now, they publish part of the 911 call. Okay, they publish part of the 911 call. And they're also... Um, Played the, the 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 news conference that was held after the funeral in front of the sheriff's office, where the lawyer talks about the child being on social media brandishing um, the firearms and what have you, and what was alleged, which was alleged or told to them that you know he poss he possibly knew the combination maybe I don't know, so. Part of the quote from the caller, who is also the babysitter, was, I don't know, I didn't know my son brought home a gun from my dad's house and it fell out of the closet and it shot the little girl that I'm babysitting and I need an ambulance now, the caller said. Now, we're going to briefly talk about that. I want to show what, what they showed on the news now. Are you shopping for a new or... Daniels, about new allegations against an 11-year-old boy after the recent death of an 8-year-old girl. Deputies say 11-year-old shot and killed Genesis Dockery. WRL's Fayetteville reporter Gilbert Bays asked Daniels several questions during the news conference and joins us live. Gilbert, we continue just to learn more and more about this tragic case. And Gerald, it is a tragic case. That press conference uh, ended uh, about 30 minutes ago, and it lasted for about 30 minutes. And I tell you, you could see the emotion on the face of the family that was out there surrounding the uh, civil rights attorney who's here in town seeking justice for, for Genesis. The bottom line here is that they wanted charges. This is crazy because this guy had been around since I was a kid, and he'd been a news reporter since I can remember. And he actually looks younger now. He he used to be very heavy set. Um, this man been around for a long time, long time. Here is that they wanted charges to be filed against those responsible for allowing an 11 year old to get access to a gun. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Again, why didn't it happen? And will it happen? Okay. We we can we can have emotions. We can go off emotions all we want to, and we can say what we want, also. But unless moves are made to change what is in place and put what needs to be in place, so that in in the future things will be different. 
then you're just gonna be in your feelings and that's it okay because while we live our lives they have their laws and when it, stuff hit the fan they go by well even if pushed even if you have to push them they still gonna only go by what the law says the routines are and what they can exact by the law okay uh let's not happen this has been a horrible nightmare you can see the emotion and grief on the face of Fawn Dockery. He's the father of eight-year-old Genesis Dockery. The little girl was shot on July 25th at her babysitter's home. This afternoon, the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office petitioned the Juvenile Justice Department to bring charges of larceny of a firearm and manslaughter against the 11-year-old accused of shooting her. This juvenile had access to this safe. All right. uh, either the safe was open and he had access to it, or he had the combination, in my opinion, that is not a secure weapon. An emotional 911 call released today from the mother of the 11-year-old. Now, even if we're talking about a safe, the gun being in the safe, blah, 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 blah why ever that is mentioned, it, North Carolina doesn't re even require that. So, at the end of the day, it just boils down to he got access to it. Okay, he was allowed to obtain it or more than one and take it with him. Okay. An emotional 911 call released today from the mother of the 11-year-old describes what happened. I didn't know that my son brought a gun home from my dad's house and it fell out of the closet and it shot the little girl that I'm babysitting. Okay. And I need an ambulance now. Okay, so we're going to get... Genesis died two days later at the house. Okay, let's rewind that a little bit. I want to play that again. So we're not happy with, uh, at this time, that the supervision parents, whoever the case may be, that's had control of these weapons are not being charged with a crime. And that's something that we're pushing for. Um, yeah. The 911 calls, but I want to go back to. Um. It's of larceny of a firearm and manslaughter against the 11-year-old accused of shooting her. This juvenile had access to this safe. All right. Uh, either the safe was open and he had access to it Oh, he had the combination. In my opinion, that is not a secure weapon. An emotional 911 call released today from the mother of the 11-year-old describes what happened. I didn't know that my son brought a gun home from my dad's house and it fell out of the closet and it shot the little girl that I'm babysitting. Okay. And I need an ambulance now. Okay, so we're going to get... So he had access to it. What did the law say about minors having access to firearms? We already read that, right? North Carolina laws. Okay, I'm I'm just really not saying what I want to say, but just I'm just this is just to make you think. Died two days later at the house. The family. Hold on, let me find out. From the mother of the 11 year old describes what happened. I didn't know that my son brought a gun home from my dad's house and it fell out of the closet and it shot the little girl that I'm babysitting. Okay. And I need an ambulance now. Okay, so we're gonna get. Genesis died. All right, now, y'all heard that, right? Who starts a 911 call like that? Okay. Who starts a 911 call like that? Um, let's just put yourselves, let's all try to put ourselves in her position. Let's just get to the point where we see that a child, a little girl, eight years old, that you've been babysitting was shot. Okay, you recognize that your brain processes that. How do you start the 911 call with, I didn't know that my son got a gun from my father's house and it fell out of the closet and shot her. Do you think that would be what you would initially say to the 911 caller? Unless you had time to think about this, because you got to think about it. You got to process it when I went to school in Clayton, North Carolina in 2012 for truck driving. One thing they taught us is about 
football field lengths, speed of the truck versus um, how many miles per hour you're going, how long it takes for the truck to stop, and how to factor all of these things in. And one thing you have to factor is that first you have to see that you need to stop for whatever reason. Another car, a person, a deer, who knows? Well, they say hit a deer. Don't try to swerve or anything, right? But we talk about we need to suddenly stop, okay? Then your brain has to process, okay, I need to hurry up, stop this vehicle. Then your brain has to tell your body to make the movements to hurry up and stop that vehicle, whether you're going to downshift, press the clutch, press the brake in the clutch, however you're going to do that. With a truck, it's a whole, it's a lot of moving parts, right? It's a lot going on. And then you got to think about how long it's going to take for that truck to stop. Um, the force you need to put on the brake and the clutch and the gears you need to be in, all that you need to try to do. Then you're also thinking about all who's all around. You're thinking about yourself. You're thinking about, I don't want to tip this truck and trailer over. I don't want it to jackknife. I don't want it to, I forgot the name of it, but I don't want the trailer to come forward and come through the truck and kill me. I don't want an accident to happen. I want to prevent a whole lot of things that you know that are going to possibly happen because it's it's just not natural to suddenly try and stop a truck right so then you have to process first you have to process that there is a problem and you need to stop abruptly then your brain has to tell yourself this after seeing it and recognizing and identifying it then your brain has to tell your body to make the movements and it has to calculate what movements need to be made and then you start to make the movements and then it begins to take place. Imagine how much time goes into that. And I'm using this as an example for a reason. Think about you walk in the room or you in the, I don't know, okay? But we see a child has been shot, okay? We processing a whole lot of stuff, right? A gun, a bullet came out of a gun and it hit a little girl. This is bad. She's in danger. Let's say at minimum, we all going to process that much, right? We're going to process what next? These are the questions. Just, just, just to make you think. What are we going to process next? Are we going to process she, she's hurt? She's going to possibly die. I need to hurry up and get her help. I got to call 911. Likely, we're going to be processing that next. But will we also be processing other things? It's possible. Like, say we didn't see it. Let's just assume we didn't see it. What happened? How did this happen? A bullet doesn't just get inside her head. How did she get shot? Did you hear the gun? Did you do? What do you see else in the room? Your brain is processing a whole lot of stuff. Okay. Okay. How much of that do you take time to try and process further to make sense out of it to gather some kind of conclusion for your brain before you actually make that 911 call? Because I think we will all agree that most importantly is this child needs immediate help that I cannot provide. I got to call 911. So to try and process what happened, how it happened and everything like that, that's probably something you're going to start to process at another time. I don't know whether it's while the EMTs are on the way, while they're working on her, after you get off the phone, usually they keep you on the phone till they get there. So maybe not then. I'm just trying to make you think. At what point do we process how it happened and what happened before we make that call because you have to process it analyze it and come to a conclusion and some sort of understanding before you can even spit it out your mouth to the 911 operator okay you have to because even even if some of you may say, I'm not even going to be thinking about how it happened in that moment. That's possible. It's, it's, it's too quick. Immediately, this child is hurt. It's bad. 
call 911 she need help thinking about what happened how it happened you may not have even begun to get there yet some people may be also simultaneously like she shot how the hell she get shot like okay so if you didn't see it and you're thinking about it do you ask a person do you ask who's ever in the room did you see it how did you come to a conclusion that your child got the gun from the grandfather house which is your father and the gun was in the closet and it fell out the closet and hit her how do you come to that conclusion because that conclusion had to be fully thought out and assessed and came to in order for it to come out of her mouth and for it to be the first thing to come out of her mouth okay hold on now i'm gonna play some of the chris thorn show again shout out to him he is a channel and he covers a lot of things that happen mostly with children and he doesn't even have children okay he's been doing this for a long time right and he covered this story and although the story is circulating it, it still needs awareness but for me mostly to people there in North Carolina because you are the ones who are going to be able to get laws changed that need to be changed to possibly prevent more of this happening in the future now I'm gonna play some of what he said but before I do I want to go to the comment section Somebody, uh, Barbara Rushing, we want to give her credit for her comments. Okay. She says, I'm catching the replay. Wow, this is crazy. He stole a gun from one of his relatives. I'm wondering how he got the combination. He must have been one of his relatives entering the combination. Oh, it must have seen. I'm sorry. Wow, it's crazy how, because I'm trying to also, this is a good example right here. I'm also, while I'm reading, trying to analyze, is this the right comment I want to read? You see how I'm trying to do both at the same time? I'm trying to analyze, is this the right comment that I wanted to read? But but in doing so, while reading it, it made me misread. So if you call in 911 and what you know puts you in a state of panic, shock, you scared, all kind of crazy emotions going on, you're not going to be able to properly calmly execute perfect brain power to go ahead and give a synopsis of initially how the gun was here and how this happened unless you've already processed that and told yourself that you must say this in my opinion okay so let me go back to the comment wow it's crazy how he was showing off his guns on social media and no one didn't tell his mom if a child is posting things like that, someone at home isn't watching them. I am wondering, too, where his father is at. I know back in the day, if I was posting certain things, okay, so it's not the comment I wanted to read. At some point, 911 had to ask where the gun is right now. She told them it was on a kitchen counter. It's the way this writer wrote it that made it confusing. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, well, I'm just going to show y'all what she's talking about so you don't be confused. Here we go. The mother must have had a conversation with the son before calling 911. How many minutes did that take? Okay. Logic tells me and everything that I've just said to you guys, my 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 example of the truck driving and analyzing and all that this is why as adults we are the first ones to be held responsible when children make serious decisions okay because we're supposed to keep them out of trouble that is our job because we have the brain capacity we have the life experience you see how my truck driving experience also helps me to put this in further perspective and to help me to come to a conclusion that it is not likely that the first thing that is going to come out your mouth when you make a 911 call is that your son got a gun from his 
your father's house and it was in the closet, fell out the closet and shot the girl in the head. So you just you just solved the case right there. You just laid it out. So you had to have taken the time to first in your head say, oh, this is bad. Brain processing. This is bad. What happened to her? Oh, she got shot with a gun. How did she get shot with a gun? We're going past getting her help now because we, we analyzing all of this. How did she get shot with a gun? I must understand how this happened before I call 911. You can't say it if you don't know it. You can't say it if you don't understand it. Only way it can be said so fluently and easily is if you already knew the information prior to the incident taking place. Am I wrong? As thinking adults with life experience, our brain tells us, our intelligence tells us, our maturity tells us, I'm not wrong. The comment, the mother must have had a conversation with the son first before calling 911. How many minutes did that take? Since she was awake, would those minutes have helped Genesis? We're going to we're going to play some of his video and we're going to talk about that. The boy's mother started to call 911 with I didn't know. So her priority was clearing herself, not Genesis. She's being deceptive. The call should have started with the priority subject. A little girl was shot at my house. Send an ambulance right now. Her priority was what she says first, her innocence. This commenter is at dingling underscore. Mm -hmm. Okay. I ain't bullshitting, no. I, unless I just gone completely stupid, I don't know. I think this is where he's gonna go over the what was reported from the 911 call. Because we know it's not the whole call, but it's some of the call. I want to blow it up so y'all can see it too and read it with me. Maybe it's something that I'm missing. I don't know. Maybe it's something that I'm missing. On Thursday, WRAL News obtained a 911 call from the shooting. She says, I didn't know my son brought home a gun from my dad's house. And it fell out the closet. And it shot the little girl that I'm babysitting. And I need an ambulance now. All right, y'all see that now? It fell out the closet. The caller also described to the 911 dispatch. Now, if we want to go any deeper, which we don't necessarily need to, but there's a lot of eyes in that. Okay, if you take psychology, then you already know what I'm saying. There's a lot of eyes in that. I didn't know. I need an ambulance. Why do you need one? Why is this all about you? Again, back to this comment. Her priority was what she says first. Her, her innocence. Her priority was clearing herself, not Genesis. This is just a general assumption that can be made given what we know. Okay. To what happened on July the 25th. The dispatcher says what part of her body is injured. The caller said her head. The dispatcher said is there more than one wound. For some reason she claims she can't tell. All right. Well, I guess to get her a bit further doubt, she didn't want to touch the body, I guess. I don't know. 
The dispatcher said, honey, honey, is there more than one? What seems to be more offensive to me is, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go off more logic than anything, because if I was a child, I could just be emotional right now, blah, blah, blah. But as an adult, I can tell myself emotions don't help as much as logic does, right? Okay, so I'm going to say what seems to be more offensive to me is that the dispatcher is stated to say what part of the body is injured and the caller says her head is there more mo more than one wound says the dispatcher and the caller says i can't tell you cannot tell but you had the time and you put in the effort to assess what how this injury occurred unless you you already knew all of these facts Okay, unless you already knew all of these facts, unless you already knew your son had a gun or several guns, unless you already knew he put it in a closet, if it was in a closet, or whatever he had it, did it, whatever. You had to have already known this, or you took the time to assess it. You had to have already known that your son had a gun and that gun shot the little girl. You had to have already known this or you took the time to assess it. So to sit up here and say you can't tell, again, the commenter seems to be very spot on when they say she was more concerned about herself than Genesis. How can you not tell if there's more injuries on her when you had the time or the knowledge somehow of this whole story about the gun, your son, how he got it, it was in the closet, it fell. You come on now. Let's not come on now. How did she come up with all that information but you didn't have time to check the baby out and see where there were more injuries? Wound. The caller said, I can't tell. She's awake. It's in her eyebrow. The caller also told the dispatcher the gun used was on her countertop. Now, that's where the other comment came in at and said that they assume um, that you know the the dis because you know when they call and listen we we are not hearing the entire nine one one call so let's so we can only make assumptions on certain things but the commenter says at some point nine one one had to have asked where the gun is right now she told him it was on the countertop okay now usually when they have a call you can go listen to many other calls involving a shooting or a gun or a weapon they're gonna ask where's the weapon now where's the weapon now they're gonna want to let ems and the the fire rescue the cops know when they come in uh at least where you say it's at do, do, does the person still have it do you have it how do we know that this weapon is not a problem for us or can we assume that it's at least not in your in anybody's hands so that that's you know seemingly what that is um, let's play some more. Y'all seen the same thing I'm seeing, right? Or am I going blind? I'm going to fast forward because he focusing on the countertop part. We go from a closet to now a countertop story. They look suspect. Now, who is, let me see something here. And I don't blame him because he, he's using his brain. He's just thinking. He's analyzing. He's just looking at like you know okay first it was this now it's this but you know again like i said and as this person commented there there it seems like they're giving bits and pieces of course we know we did not sit there and hear that entire 911 call we know that so that probably was a point where they said where is it now and they just didn't be clear on that in which they should have because it leaves room for focus on stuff that probably just now he's gonna show something here 
Yeah. How do you say 11 year old shot? Okay. That did not happen. An emotional, An emotional secure Hold weapon. On. That's the babysitter, huh? Mm. Okay, That's so and let me wind this a little bit. So he has gone to another website, which is NC Beat Gerald. And um, he has um, a reporting on his website where he also uh, showed the babysitter um, who is alleged to be the babysitter. Um, but somebody said the babysitter identified the other world. So, Acme, dear, I am so sorry. I'm sorry this happened to you, honey. That's the babysitter, huh? That's the babysitter, huh? Ain't that something? Look how pretty that baby was. Damn, she was pretty. Somebody said the 911 call is at the bottom. I believe they even posted her name. Let me go back and see. Okay, so I had it on pause the whole time. I was finishing out um, this video. They did post her name. Um, gosh, I said so much. But basically, at the end of the day, this woman had already set up basically her their their entire defense when she called nine one one. My son, yes, he went he 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 did a thing. He got the gun, okay. Um, but it she removed it from his hands. She stated it to where it's not even in his hands. He didn't even pull the trigger. Now, what would the five year old say? But again. Will the parents want to put the five-year-old through that? Will the courts want to put the five-year-old through that? I've been in a court situation with juveniles at the time, and the, the laws can sometimes determine that they're not going to either allow the testimony because the child is so young to be admissible, or they're not going to put that type of strain on. Because imagine cross-examination, courtroom full of strangers, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now this is not me saying that the five-year-old has an account. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying we know the five-year-old was there. We're going off what we publicly know, right? Just all kind of thoughts because at the end of the day, y'all, this woman called and it is her story, the son's story, whomever the gun on the story is against, what, a deceased child and North Carolina laws. And she called in and she made sure to say, I didn't know. She made sure to say, basically, the, the gun was not in my son's hand, a.k.a. he didn't pull the trigger. Uh, thirdly, this definitely was an accident. The gun was in the closet. Did he get a stepladder put in the closet? Like, why we? Okay. But that's what she said. And it fell. And it went off. Guess she already laid that out. She took her time. To make sure. Now, who did she call? Did she call somebody? Did she text somebody? How did she know to come up with this story so quick? Her, she had to process all of this before she called. Okay. Yes. When things happen, you do start to think about, oh, boy, I'm about to be in trouble. Yeah, you start thinking about that. But priority of a life, if you care, and I'm listening, if you care. A life being in immediate danger in front of you is going to likely take priority of most other things, including the, the scaredness of your thoughts. We Do we know of people that kill people purposely, self-defense, accidentally all the time, and then immediately get scared and take off instead of getting them help? It happens a lot. It happens a lot, but they didn't even take time to assess what they already knew. And a lot of times doing that, they leave evidence behind. Why? Because they was getting up out of there. They wasn't even taking the time doing all that. This woman came up with a whole story that covered how many bases? That's what else you got? Then when you look at the laws, what else does she need to say? I didn't know. It was in the closet. It fell. 
So, Genesis law, maybe? Which may not directly affect this case, unfortunately, but in the future, this should not, this should not be a questionable situation again. Because regardless of what you say, the lawyer has already shown the boy was having guns on social media, okay? How many charges can, can be brought for that? What did you not know? How come you didn't know it's your responsibility to know? What can the law be done for that? What can the law be done for the fact that this woman is supposed to be the one in charge and for the safety of these children and they were not safe? All of them was in danger, okay? And something did happen um, to one of them. What can be done with that? Where's the laws on that? What can be done for the person who allowed the child, where they gave it to him? Because in some cases of the law, he could, he has the right to allow the child permission to use the gun. We saw that. But if the child allegedly took it, do we hold the gun owner responsible? Okay, North Carolina law says what to that? Now, what parts of that need to be changed? Okay. And my thing is, too, get, let's look at the things that we're hearing and we know, and just imagine what all could possibly come out in the future about this. Because either way it go, no matter what you hear, no matter how you feel, no matter what's been said and no matter what is proven, we still are restricted by the law. Okay? So another thing parents can do, friend, friend of the family, coworker, church member, they say they Jesus. I don't even care. Check them out. Check them out. Run their record. It's people who date people and don't even check them out, which is crazy. You move in neighborhoods and you don't even look for how many sex offenders are in the area. To me, that's crazy. Even if I didn't have children, I'm still looking at her. Okay, because they, 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 they mess with adults too, right? Okay. Check them out. Who are you dating? Who comes over? Who's going to be there while my children are there? This is the type of parent I was. These are the type of parents that we have. Yep, people might think it's over the top. Yeah, my children thought it was over the top. Now you can't go over their house. I don't know their mama like that. I don't know. I don't know. It was, I, was, I was tight. But you can be like that when you've been through a lot of things as a child. Okay, you know that there is no limitations on what can happen to your child in somebody else's care. And you start to think about all these things. And we do have some parents that are out here like this and your child probably hates you for it. But maybe as they get older, they'll understand. Maybe, maybe not. But at least you possibly prevented all types of things from happening by being, because you can't be too safe. You just cannot. Who are your family? You got children. What's going on with them? How's their schooling? What type of stuff are they into? We now, now we got social media to factor in because children are on social media, even though social media has age restrictions. We know they're on social media. Find a social media. Don't just the parent. Oh, I got the best child. He all right. He did it. Okay, cool. Thank you for your account. Now I'm gonna go and do my own investigation. Yeah, I'm going that far. Yeah. Do we not see? Yeah, we going that far. I would suggest in the future you go that far. What 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 is some alleged things that the child is into? Who are they influenced by? Who are they mentors? Who are they family members? What are what are they up to? What do they talk to them about? How do they feel about this, that, and the third? You know, people can hate you because you like Trump or you don't like Trump. This nowadays it go like that. It's deeper than just oh you black or you white or 
you got money you don't got money it's all kind of reasons people can and they could be you know six degrees of separation they could be another party that has access you, you, there could be an uncle you know that comes over that mm, mm, who, what we know about him he gonna be there when my child is here can we have a written agreement that nobody these people certain such ain't gonna be there I mean I don't know but as much as you possibly can you can't completely control an environment but find out you're gonna be like Inspector Gadget trying to find out what's going on in that environment and what your child could probably possibly be having access to there could be an offender that lives right next door and and sometimes they don't even have to be registered I mean they do have to be I'm sorry they do have to be registered but sometimes they don't register will my child be outside in the yard does a neighbor come over? Do they bring cakes and pies and you give it to my child? All that. There's so many different things to think about. Who would have ever thought of a situation like this happening? But look at just bits and pieces of information of different factors that could possibly have had a play in the situation. So you have to be cautious of everything. It's deep nowadays having children. It's deep at any time, but definitely nowadays. Somebody said the 911 call is at the bottom. I didn't know that my son brought a gun home from my dad's house and it fell out of the closet and it shot the little girl that I'm babysitting. Okay. And... I need an ambulance now. Okay, so we're going to get... Yeah, we already played all them. I want to hear the whole damn 911 call. That's what I want to hear the whole damn 911 call. But he got a lady. Yeah, that that's... um, that's You you to something right there, uh, Chris. You to something right there. And so is, you know, people in your comment section. Great observations. Um that 911 call just the beginning of it is very telling it's very telling and then when you end up being limited by the law remember Shania Davis Seabrook trailer park five years old her mother Antoinette um was on drugs and she had a baby with the guy he's a white guy one night stand he said and um Shania mostly been with the dad since birth and somehow he felt like the daughter was getting herself back I mean the mom was getting herself back together so she said and she wanted to spend time with the daughter and he let her go spend a weekend Y'all remember that story? This girl's five years old. The mama been on drugs, living in a drug neighborhood. We, oh, my mom, when my mom was alive, we used to live in a house at the top of that trailer park. So that truck, that area, not only that, he knew her history, right? But for whatever reason, he just, he, he was thinking the child should have a relationship with her mother. It's better for my child. But was it? If he'd have been more logical and looked at how many ways can you prove to me long term that you're not on drugs? What's this environment like? Can, maybe you can see her somewhere else but not here, right? Okay, if she going there, who's all there? Who comes there? Who lives there? The girl lived with her sister. Sister had a boyfriend. As a matter of fact, it was the sister boyfriend she gave the baby to. Cause the the dude, Mario, said he came to. He he said he got high. He was taking some crazy stuff, and he wanted to go sleep with the sister. But the sister said she was sleep or she didn't answer or something like that. So then he ran into. 
the mother of Shania and she had owed him some money for some dope and it boiled down to her saying take my child and bring her back and he took her y'all remember the video surveillance of him carrying her into a hotel room with a hair wild wrapped in a blanket and they ended up finding her body and he had his way with that little girl and the father and the family was mourning because when that child was happy and fine with them because he decided to let her have a relationship with her mother that he felt like she could benefit from but he didn't necessarily take into account the situation around her being there who all could be coming in and out that home how much of a danger can they possibly be who lives there who would have access to my child just something so important that seems like you're going over the top seems like you might have to fight for it you might have to argue about it I don't know but at the end of the day I mean you're a parent you know what you're doing is for safety and for protections this woman Let's say she didn't know what her son was up to. Let's say she didn't know he liked guns. Let's say she didn't know he was playing with him. He had him. He had access to him. Let's say she didn't know anything else about him being any type of danger or anybody else possibly could be a danger. Let's say she didn't know. But if you as a parent can find this out by doing your own research, you'll know that's not the place for my child. It's never as simple as looking at one aspect. Oh, this this is, seems good. This could be good for my child. It's never as simple as that because we got all kind of people out here. And then when you look at the laws, look at um, Antoinette. Mario went to jail. He got murder and other stuff. Antoinette got what? Endangerment? She got in danger. If she never handed that baby over. Y'all remember this story? Shania Davis. And the cops said when they came over there, she was cleaning feces off the porch. And later on, you know, they found out. Listen, there's more to that story that we didn't never publicly hear about. People would do stuff. But the mother handed that girl over to that man. What do you think could possibly happen to your child at five years old when you know that you're handing him, her over to a guy who is on drugs? He, who knows, could be a violent criminal. Definitely wants to violate her. It's a possibility that she's going to be scarred for life and probably not alive when you get her back. But she made that choice. Just like these adults knew, these are possibilities. The possibilities of allowing an 11-year-old to get his hands on a gun. And like somebody else said, nobody knew. Nobody knew. It's kind of hard to believe the mom didn't know. You know why? Social media is a big place. Yes, it is. But at the same time, who is it? We talked about this. Who is a child likely to show off a gun to? His friends. People at his school. Yeah, it's cool when people who don't know you can say and think you this and think you whatever that you're not. That, yeah, that's a big, you know, catcher for social media, but... To impress your friends? Probably so. Not one person 
that knew her saw this? She had no inkling. And he felt so comfortable that it could possibly be stored in a closet where it just can happen to fall out. How did it fall out the closet so easily? How did he, did he that tall at 11 years old? He reached the closet? Child. Again, leave your thoughts and comments below.